Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? This is Maria Liberati. Stay tuned for this week's special guest. We have Gabe Geller, a wine educator, who's going to tell us all about kosher wines. You know, it was just the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, and Yom Kippur is coming up. And uh, Gabe is going to also share with us some tips on kosher wines that we can enjoy whether or not you celebrate the Jewish holidays. And my other special guest is Dr. Sharon Lamb Hartman. She's the author of a really interesting book called The Authenticity Code. And you know, if you want to find your passion in life, well, The Authenticity Code can definitely help and uh, Dr. Sharon Lamb Hartman is also a coach. So stay tuned for those special guests. And tomorrow is National Guacamole Day. So I'll be sharing a recipe for a really simple, easy, refreshing guacamole. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jacob Zimmerman, and this is my podcast, Season to Taste. From conies to cheesecake and barbecue to brunch, we all have meals that mean something special to us. Join me as I explore the traditions, delicacies, and legends that have shaped what we know and love about food. Welcome to the introduction of this new podcast. I'm very excited um, to get started on this this journey, um, learning about what makes food special to people, you know? Food has become a really special thing to me in, in forming relationships in college. Um, and, and learning to cook and, and be more independent. So taking that, those things that I've learned, um, the things that make food special to me and my memories and um, the relationships I've formed, and going out and finding what my peers and what other people um, around the food community also relate to on that and the things that they find special about food. So I hope you'll join me on this journey, drop a follow, and um, don't miss the next episode. So here's my recipe for an olive guacamole. And you know, this is a perfect recipe for tailgating. You know, the season for tailgating and home gating is creeping up on us again. And uh, here's an easy, yummy recipe to get the season started and celebrate. Happy National Guacamole Day. My olive guacamole. Three ripe avocados, two garlic cloves, the juice of one freshly squeezed lemon, one half cup of black olives. Chop the garlic and olives. Chop them pretty finely and add that to the mashed pulp of the avocados. Dress that with the lemon juice and a drizzle of olive oil. I would say about a teaspoon or two teaspoons of olive oil. Blend that all together, add salt and black pepper to taste. Serve with pita bread chips or uh, crusty Italian bread, corn chips, crackers, or use it as a sandwich spread and you have the perfect easy guacamole. Enjoy. And for more recipes, you can find a lot more recipes in my book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, and one that I'm really proud of, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions, second edition. That is my Gourmand World award-winning book, and The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style. You can find those books on Amazon.com, at MariaLiberati.com, and anywhere books are sold online. You can also find loads of recipes on my blog at MariaLiberati.com. And don't forget to share and like and review this month, the month of September's episodes for your chance to be entered in a giveaway drawing for a copy of one of the books from my book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. Share a review on social media, hashtag it the Maria Liberati Show, and you'll be entered in a giveaway for a book from my book series. Hi, and today we have um, Dr. Sharon Lamb Hartman, 
and she is actually, she has a really interesting company, which she's going to share with us today. It's called Inside Out Learning, but she's all, also an author of a really interesting book that's coming out in October called The Authenticity Code. And uh, I invited her here today because one of her areas of expertise is helping people find their passion. And I think that's something that really makes you happy in, in life, right? Finding, knowing what your passion is. I don't think everybody knows how to find their passion. I agree, Maria. And when we do find our passion and we find our purpose and we start living a life aligned with that, yes. I, I think that you feel more fulfilled. You feel happier as well yes. in your life. Yes, I I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Why do you, why do you think that is? Do you think people just kind of want to fit in with the, uh, you know, status quo and just do what everyone else is doing? Yes. I think as human beings, we also have a desire to please others. And I've seen a lot of times, let's say that your parents or authority figures wanted you to be one way uh -huh. in life. And so maybe you went down that path. Uh, and never really thought about what do I want to do and who do I want to be as a human being and what's my purpose? Why was I put on this earth? Uh -huh. And it doesn't necessarily have to be some huge purpose of, well, I've got to go change the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it could be uh, one, one human being at a time. You know, it can be, it could be you were put on this earth to really uh, raise a loving family. So there are so many reasons and each of us is unique and we need to really connect with that authentic purpose. Well, I love that. Yes. I think, you know, people don't realize, I, I love what you said, you know, just, I, I shouldn't say just, but right. having the desire to, you know, as your purpose to raise a family is, is a great passion. There's so much, you know, and if you put your heart and soul and passion into it, it's something that is definitely an admirable something. I think people, you know, don't think of that as also as a passion, but it definitely can be. And, um, you know, raise, raising successful human beings or having a successful family. So, um, but it doesn't have to be, it could be other things as well, right? So exactly. how, do you, how do you go about, or what would you recommend for those that uh, think they want to find their passion? They don't know exactly where to start. What, yes. What well, that's why I wrote the book, The Authenticity Code. So yes. uh, it, it'll be coming out in October and yes. there's, there's, it's a parable about two people who are competing for the same job that they really want in life. So that was their purpose. And oh. uh, they really wanted this job. And it's a story about how they discover their authentic selves in the interview process. And mm -hmm. then who gets the job and why, which I won't share. Um, uh -huh. But at the end of every chapter, there's right. activities that you can do uh -huh. to help get in touch with your passion. And yeah. so there's one activity that asks five questions. Uh -huh. And those five questions help you to connect with your unique purpose. Uh -huh. uh, and it could be, you know, what's a role that's calling to you right now, you know, that you just have always wanted to be like, for me, author was out there. Mm -hmm. And I, I have, I have a family, I have an, a, su a successful business, mm -hmm. but I never wrote a book. And I really wanted to do that. So uh, that was mine, you know, a couple years ago, and now and now actually putting this out into the world. Yeah. And then, there's questions in there, like one question that I think is so important that we ask ourselves is actually our greatest wound uh -huh. can be the source of our greatest gift to give in the world. Wow. And that's a paradigm shift because mm -hmm. where we're most wounded, we can really empathize with others uh -huh. because we know what it was like to go through something like that. Yes. So for example, I had a friend I was out to dinner with and uh -huh. she's like, I think I'm being called to really help people with child trauma. Uh -huh. And I said, why do you think that is? And she said, I've experienced so much of it myself. Mm -hmm. Like she went through so much child trauma herself mm -hmm. from watching a mother be domestically abused mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, an alcoholic parent, uh -huh. all of these things. Uh -huh. And now she wants to help others to go through child trauma. 
And that is often the source of our greatest wound can be really our greatest gift to give in the world, no matter how we choose to give it. So it could be in our families, it could be in our careers, Mm -hmm. it could be in our volunteer work, however Mm -hmm. we choose. That's interesting, because that's a a great way of turning a really negative thing, right, into something very positive, and just turning everything around. So here you have, you know, instead of obsessing about all the unfair things that may have happened to you, you're finding a way to turn it into something positive, right, and really doing the world a benefit, you know, giving a benefit it to the world um, for that experience, that unfortunate experience, but you're helping others. And so you're turning it more into something that is helping everyone um, and help helping you probably helping not you, but helping that you're basically being able to, uh, I think it's a cathartic type of experience. That's what I'm trying it to is. say. Right? It is. Yeah. It's a great way of putting it, Maria, because uh, when we can stop trying to receive it from out there, whatever right. we wanted to receive and start right. giving it to others. Yes. That's when I've seen lives transform. You know, it's right. even happened in my own because I had great parents uh-huh. uh, and um, they both have passed, but they, they were fabulous parents. They, the one thing I wanted to receive that, that I didn't was helping me to see and celebrate my unique gifts and talents. Right. So then when I am now giving that to others through this book, through this work, Mm-hmm. Uh, that is when my life transformed as well. It's, it's, it, 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 it's such a sense of fulfillment. And I think so many people these days with the COVID pandemic mm-hmm. have reevaluated their lives, yes. right? And it's yes. like, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? Exactly. It makes, it puts things in perspective. And there's also a real increase in mental health. I I have noticed mental health issues like 33% now. And I think a lot of that, um, not a a lot, but I mean, I think that if people find their unique gift and their unique purpose, Mm -hmm. it can help you to feel more fulfilled in your life. Oh, I I couldn't agree more. The one thing, and I'm sure because you you, this is your, what you do. But the one thing that I find is that people really don't, um, they don't acknowledge their uniqueness and people don't realize that just, I think it was one of the first things you said for this interview that everybody has this uniqueness. Everybody is really a unique being and you need to really acknowledge, right? You, your uniqueness where I think too many of us actually like they, they realize they have this unique thing and they think it makes them strange or, you know, out of kilter. And that's really what you should be dwelling on, right. To develop you know, this, if you have a unique trait, you were given that for a reason. So that's what makes you unique and an interesting being and not a cookie cutter person. It Um, is so true. And I've seen so many of us and I've fallen into this trap too. Like I'll often see people who are super funny and, and, uh, and humorous, like, and I, for years, I am fun, but I try to be that way, even in interviews. And I realized, you know, maybe that isn't my uniqueness. So I had to look at that myself. And we help others in corporations and businesses as well, where, uh, you know, people think, oh, I want to be like a good storyteller, or I want to be uh, super good on the stage, uh-huh. but we each have a uniqueness that we bring that we need to celebrate. Yes. So I've realized mine is, is more clarity uh-huh. and insights and uh-huh. making people think and transform their mindsets. Wow. And, uh, the, the humor sometimes comes out, but it's definitely not my core unique gift to bring. <laughs> but it's it's really celebrating whatever that is in you. Yes. Wow, that's interesting. So um, tell us about, so I know you were telling me that there's an app and all this other, all these other ways people can find out more info on the authenticity code. Yes. So the authenticity code is available on Amazon. It's on, okay. it's on pre-order right now. Okay. And so people can buy either an ebook or a, a, a hard copy book. Uh-huh. And then in the book, uh-huh. there's actually a code in the back of the book and you can download Load three free steps of our app, which is the authenticity code app. Uh-huh. And then you can do that right on your phone. And it, 
It gives you activities to do Mm -hmm. where you can develop more of that authentic presence and your purpose. And then if you like those three steps, Mm -hmm. there's a discount in the book that you can put in the code and coupon and Uh and buy the app. So that's great. Yeah, it's it's awesome because people some people like to read and Mm -hmm. and even if you read uh, or you can listen to it on tape, too. But even if you read, you might want to go deeper into the concepts and the app helps you to do that. And you can actually participate with like minded people going through it at the same time. So you can be out on a community uh, sharing what you're learning with each other. Uh huh. That's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's good to know. So people can also participate together um, yes. with friends or family if they want to do it as a as an activity together. And then inside out learning. So I know you were telling me that you also. Um, I mean, we touched upon this already, but inside out learning is also a company that helps people to discover their passion. Yes. So there, we do individual coaching for your life purpose, your life coaching. We do executive coaching and we do professional and leadership development training programs. So we have a public program called the Authenticity Code that's available virtually. And Uh if you go to our website, Inside Out Learning, you can look at our coaching programs and you can also look at our public program Uh that you could register for. And it's a couple webinars that you get to do that really reinforce the, uh, the concepts in the book as well. That's great. So, um, thank you so much for, for sharing all this with us. Tell us, um, where everybody can, so people can, I know you said they can pre-order the book on Amazon right now. They can pre-order the book on Amazon. Uh, the app is on our website, but also available in the book Okay, that you can download. The, the link is in the book mm-hmm. and, and you get three free steps. And then you can also go to insideoutlearning.com, our website, and yes. see everything there as well in terms of our public training program, our app, and our book. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Well, thank you yeah. so much for being here and uh, helping us find our passion and our purpose in life That's uh, that is so important as we do did say and much success with the book. So it's being released officially in October, right? In October. And I do want to say we have some universities interested in putting the book into their curriculum. So if if some of your listeners have college students who are trying to also connect with what Uh they're here to do, I highly recommend the book for them as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I would definitely because I do. uh, In fact, I've done some internship programs with, with college students. And I think I would agree. I think this really helps them because that's where I found the most in talking to them where there's these really wonderful, unique qualities that I notice they have. And it's like they hide, you know, they want to hide these different qualities or characteristics they have. And it's actually like a talent that they need to work on. So I think this would be a great, definitely something. uh, Yeah, definitely. And I call it the it factor. It kind of gives you the it factor when you go in to try to get a job or uh, do good work in the world. Mm -hmm. People really, uh, or or be around your family and people like are like, wow, she or he or they have it. And I I think that's that's so important and we don't teach it in our schools. And so we need to learn it. And I love that colleges are actually looking at this. Oh, that's great. Well, much, much success with that too. Thank you so much. This is Dr. Sharon Lamb Hartman. Thank you so much for being with us and And uh, make sure you check out the authenticity code. Thanks again. Thank you, Maria, for having me on. Hi, I have today as a special guest because, you know, there are so many, we have so many, um, actually so many Jewish holidays coming up. They are festive occasions. They all part of the celebrations always include some type of a meal. So we have Gabe Geller, who is the wine educator for Royal Wines here. And he's going to give us some interesting, actually interesting info about um, not only kosher wines, but I don't think people realize what makes 
wine, a kosher wine. So, um, Gabe, thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Maria. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. And um, so tell us, I know one of the things that I was fascinated with, because I I didn't, I was not aware of what makes a wine a kosher wine. And I know you sent me some interesting facts. So maybe you can explain to our audience, how is a wine, a kosher wine? You know, is there a different taste to it? I think people might think there's like a different taste. Or Okay. So wine, uh, as far as kosher uh, is concerned, uh, is uh, pretty much like uh, every other uh, product that you see on the shelf. Uh, with a kosher certification, something that most people absolutely do not notice at all, because unless you are actually looking uh, to buy uh, a kosher product in a store, such as ice cream, for example, haagen ice cream, always have a kosher certification. If you're looking for kosher ice cream, then you're looking for that uh, certification of the product. If you don't care about it, you don't care about it, and and it doesn't change anything. It tastes, it doesn't taste any uh, any different. Yes. Uh, the the yeah. kosher certification uh, means uh, means a uh, supervision by a rabbinical team uh, who are uh, qualified uh, to determine whether uh, a product, uh, be it uh, be it a drink, a beverage. Or, uh, or food uh, complies with uh, kosher dietary restrictions. Uh, those uh, dietary restrictions uh, include uh, certain types uh, of, uh, of animals that are allowed or not, the, the way they are slaughtered, uh, the, the fact that you cannot mix uh, meat and, uh, and, and dairy, uh, no shellfish, and, and, and a number of other uh, requirements. When it, when it comes to wine, however, uh, wine never contains meat, uh, it never contains dairy, it never contains uh, shellfish, of course. Uh, so what makes uh, a wine kosher? Uh, and the answer is, uh, is interesting. It's a little bit more complex because it's much more spiritual than it is, uh, uh, I would say, practical. Uh-huh. Uh, what makes a wine kosher? is the fact that uh, those uh, the rabbinical supervision uh, will handle hands-on all the operations from the time the grapes are crushed uh-huh. uh, after the harvest uh-huh. until the wine is completely fermented, aged, and bulled. Uh And the reason for that mm-hmm. is uh, because in the Jewish tradition, uh, wine is used as almost every holiday, and ceremony, the Sabbath, uh, the circumcision, uh, wedding, uh, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. Yes. And it was used uh, thousands of years ago in the Jewish temple uh, in Jerusalem. So it has a very uh, spiritual aspect to it, mm-hmm. which requires uh, its, uh, its production to be uh, handled by uh, Sabbath observant Jews. So not only uh, Jews should be uh, in charge of the uh, hands-on uh, production process, but it has to be Sabbath of servant Jews, so not not just any uh, any Jewish person. And uh, those people are of course trained uh, in the making of uh, of wine, and they follow the directions, the instructions of the winemaker. Uh, so you have non-kosher wineries. Uh, all over the world, whether it is in California, whether it is in uh, in France or in Italy or in Spain, mm-hmm. uh, which are not kosher wineries, but they will produce small batches of kosher supervised wines. Nice. And the difference between those kosher supervised wines uh, at those wineries and their regular non-kosher certified wines is only uh, the fact that it's the, those Sabbath observant Jews who are going to do the hands-on operations, but everything will be following the winemaker's uh, instructions, who will act as a conductor, uh, telling this worker, do this, do that, do it like this, do it like that at this time, uh, and all that. And the, 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 the bottom line is that the wine will taste absolutely no different than if it was not kosher certified. Uh, so there's absolutely no way, taste-wise, uh, to uh, to actually tell a kosher wine from a non-kosher wine. There's no so there's no difference if you did a taste taste test. You can't tell the difference. That's right. Well, That's and right. I under so I understand that there's a reason that many Passover dinners feature red wine. What's the reason for that? Okay, so there's there there, there are different customs in in, in right. different families. Actually, in my family, 
which uh, we are Jews uh, who come from uh, from a German uh, tradition. Uh -huh. uh, hundreds of years ago, uh, our family uh, uh, lived in uh, in Germany or German uh -huh. territory, like uh -huh. the east uh, the east of France, which is yes. now under French. Uh, uh, under French uh, uh, government, yes. uh, but we, we came from that from that region, and in those regions, uh, white wine was the better wine. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the specialty of Germany, you know, Riesling, Rostraminer, yes. and also Eastern France has the same uh, grape varieties. Uh, so yes. the better wines, the higher quality wines, were the white wines, and that is one of the reasons uh, uh, why in our family and the families that come from that. Uh, region originally, we yeah. actually use uh, white wine on uh, on the on the Passover. Uh, so, so it's it's really more tradition. What you know, I guess it deals with then the red or white, depending on your family's tradition. Then is that correct? That's correct. That's okay. correct. Just like on on Rosh Hashanah, we just celebrated Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish yes. New Year. Uh, this the the last week. Yes, and uh, and and there are people who eat the the, the night of uh, of Rosh Hashanah. They eat uh, a, a fish head, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and there are other people in their traditions who eat instead a sheep or a lamb head uh -huh. uh, instead of the fish head. And those are uh, family traditions that depend on where which countries, which regions in the world uh, uh, they they came from. Uh, so th there is like a difference between customs and uh, and you know uh, Jewish law requirements uh, uh, and uh, and in the case of in the case of wine for example uh, there is no difference in in the Jewish law between white and red wine it's more a matter of uh, a family tradition which one you're going to use for those uh, uh, religious cer ceremonies. Yes. So lastly, I guess I would ask you if somebody wants to try a kosher wine, um, mm -hmm. what would you recommend as a first kosher wine? I know you said there's really no difference in taste, but let's say somebody wants to venture out and just, you know, try a kosher wine. What anything you would recommend? I guess we should do a red and then a white. OK, absolutely. So I, I'll give you two examples yes. uh, for the wine. Uh, one wine that is uh, relatively uh, uh, well available uh -huh. uh, throughout the best uh, kosher wine and liquor stores in America uh -huh. yes. uh, is the Juan Herzog from California, uh -huh. Chenin Blanc, uh -huh. uh, which is grown in uh, Clarksburg, California, uh -huh. uh, in the Herzog family's uh, estate Prince Vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a wine that, that every single year, ever since they've been making it, uh gathers at you know wine competitions and uh, uh wine critics uh, the high accolades and awards and high scores uh and it's a wine that uh, retails below ten dollars mm -hmm. usually around seven eight dollars roughly right. so it's right. very affordable yes. uh, and it's a it's a fantastic delicious white wine uh, -huh. uh it has a touch of residual sugars it's a, 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 a tiny drop sweet but uh -huh. it's uh it, it will usually satisfy both people who are looking for white uh, that is crisp and dry mm -hmm. and people who are looking for something a little bit sweeter. So it uh -huh. really meets in the, uh, in the middle for, uh, uh, for both types of, uh, uh, of consumers mm -hmm. and really refreshing, delicious, a crowd pleaser. Uh, it's an excellent, uh, it's an excellent uh, kosher white wine to, uh, uh, to, first, uh, to first try if you're really looking to, 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 to try uh to try a kosher wine yes. and uh and uh, and if you want a, a red wine uh, there are many options there's for example uh the caramel selected mediterranean blend uh, -huh. uh which comes from israel caramel uh -huh. is uh, the largest winery in israel uh, -huh. uh it's also the largest um, uh and most uh, uh ancient uh, uh winery uh in uh in the modern history it's been mm -hmm. uh, uh it was established in 1882 uh -huh. uh, so the 60 years mm -hmm. and uh and and they make really uh fantastic ones it's also one that retails for roughly ten dollars give or take a, a couple dollars depending on where you buy it yes. uh it's a blend of uh, mediterranean varieties uh mm -hmm. which include uh syrah uh carignan or vedre and uh, -huh. uh and other uh grape varieties from uh from those regions because mm -hmm. israel 
it is in the Middle East, but it is on the Mediterranean uh, Sea. Uh -huh. So it's a Mediterranean uh, region, has a climate that is similar to, of course, Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, but, of, but also some parts of Italy, Spain, and the south of France, mm -hmm. and Greece, for example. And, uh, and therefore, uh, those grape varieties grow particularly well there. And it's a fantastic wine for a fantastic price uh, to try from Israel. That is kosher. Uh, try something new. Try a new region. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's something that I recommend to absolutely everybody. Uh, whether you require kosher wine or not, uh, it's an excellent wine to discover. It, just, uh, it just got in the Wine Enthusiast magazine. Uh, this past uh, this past August, it got it got the Best Buy uh, moniker for being uh, such high quality uh, for such a good price. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that, 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 and there are so many other examples. There are uh, nowadays uh, around four thousand different uh, uh, labels of uh, of kosher wines available from all over the world at all price points: white, reds. Uh, uh, new world wines, old world wines, blends, varietal wines, sweet, dry, semi-sweet, uh, semi-dry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great! That's great. Well, thank you so much, Gabe, for being here, and I should say, belated Happy New Year and Happy Holidays, because I know we have actually uh, we'll be airing this uh, the podcast on. You said Yom Kippur is this Wednesday. So this Wednesday night is Yom Kippur, Yom which is not really, you know, it's not really a wine holiday because oh. it's a fast. Most people fast for 25 hours, right. uh, but there is like a festive meal before the fast starts, yes. and, uh, and then the festive meal after the fast ends on uh -huh. Thursday night. Uh -huh. Usually because there is a fast in between, people don't drink so much wine yes. at all because uh -huh. it's not the best idea to drink alcohol. Uh, uh, before a fast that dehydrates you exactly. but some people will will actually do just a little bit because it's a festive it's a uh, celebratory uh, uh meal some people yes. will actually uh, drink wine and yes. why not there is absolutely nothing uh not nothing to to you know against it <laughs> yeah yes yes oh, that's great all right well happy holidays thank you so much for for being here and i'm sure we'll have you back again thanks uh, it will be a pleasure thank you so much maria thank you and, uh, Gabe Geller, a wine educator from royal wines thank you bye-bye thank you so much bye-bye Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. And thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, my special guest this week, wine educator Gabe Geller, and author and coach, Dr. Sharon Lamb Hartman, author of The Authenticity Code. And don't forget to share and like and review this month's episode, the month of September, and share a review with your with social media, hashtag at the Maria Liberati Show. Make my recipe for the olive guacamole that I share today. Take a picture, share, like it on social media, hashtag at the Maria Liberati Show and you'll be entered in a giveaway to win a copy of my book. We give those uh, copies away at the end of the month, and you can find my books anywhere books are sold online and at marialiberati.com, at artoflivingpremiumedia.com, and that's the Basic Art of Italian Cooking book series and the Basic Art of Book series. And you can find my videos at the Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati channel on Roku, on Vimeo, and let's see, you can also find me on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Instagram at Maria Liberati, on Twitter at Maria Liberati, and Pinterest at Maria Liberati and LinkedIn.com slash in slash M Liberati. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.